Right, so um, we have done so far what is autosomal recessive, okay, what is autosomal dominant, what is exing dominant, and exome recessive. Now, just to clarify again, autosomal recessive means that this gene, this allele, is not sex linked, it is autosomal linked, meaning it's on autosome. Autosome, just in case you don't remember, is any chromosome except the sex chromosomes. Okay, so autosomal and dominant and autosomal recessive works like monohybrid. Okay, it's just a normal dominant recessive thing. Okay, now we're going to move on from this to co-dominance. Now, co-dominance, right? Now we're not talking about sex thing anymore. Co-dominance is when both alleles are fully expressed in the heterozygote. Okay, what does that mean? This means that there's not just dominant and recessive. There is no dominant and recessive. In fact, the two in a heterozygote, okay, there would be a different phenotype. Okay, for example, okay, uh, I'm not going to talk about this. For example, cows that are heterozygotes have both red and white fur. So red is actually C, big C, R. Okay, this is standard, yeah. So this is specific for this cow thing, right? C, big R. White is C, big W. Realize that both big letters, right? Uh, realize that C is not X chromosome, it's not a C chromosome, no such thing as C chromosome. CR and CW are the same gene, but CR is the allele for white, and CW is the allele for white. Oh, sorry, CR is allele for red, CW is the allele for white. And if you have both this, right, you will have a wrong code. Now, we don't use big R, small r, Okay, because it's not dominant recessive, it's co-dominant. It can be dominant together. Now, when we do this, when there is an intermediate phenotype like this, um, and both alleles can be fully expressed in a heterozygote, so when it's co-dominant essentially, when we talk about F1 being cross, okay, Remember, it's a 3 to 1 ratio in monohybrids. Because the heterozygotes have a different phenotype, now the phenotype is a 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this. So um, this can be your, how many diagrams have you drawn so far? Three? Have you only drawn three diagrams? This is number four. Okay, label this co-dominance. This is not sex-linked, right? This is not the normal dominant recessive, this is co-dominance, right? The alleles, again, should be written this way. Big C, big R, big C, big W. These are alleles, same gene. Right, so what happens if we cross a pure breed? Okay, so this is P generation. I forgot the X, the cross. Please don't forget the cross. I realize my slides got a lot of cross missing. Right, so... um. The red cow and the white blue cow is female, uh, by the way, and what actually it doesn't matter the sex really, but I just wanted to write it down. Bull is the male. Um, so if you cross this, you get the F1 phenotypes, which is a heterozygote. <coughs> There's a roan cow. Roan coat. Excuse me, here I'm using water. <coughs> Could be a cow, could be a bull. This heterozygote. <coughs> Excuse me. I just talk a lot these few days, so it's really dry. I don't have COVID, don't worry. So um, all cattle have roan coats. This is the F1 phenotype. This is the F1 genotype. <coughs> now, if we take the F1 and we cross it with each other, So we take a roan bull and a roan cow and we cross it again. I forgot the X again. Let's draw it in. This is the genotype. 
Okay, um, if you ask me which one should I put first, now it really doesn't matter because they are dominant together, it's not one dominant, one recessive. So uh, as long as you're consistent and not confused, you're fine. Right, you have the gametes. It's quite standard looking, except that, <coughs> okay, you realize here that I'm not consistent, um, except that some are red, the heterozygotes are grown. And the homozygote for the white allele, obviously, is white. <coughs> so the F2 phenotypes here are 1 to 1 instead of 3 to 1. I'll give you two minutes to, you know, complete our gen diagram. I'm aware it's not really enough time, but I don't really have time to wait for everyone. Um, so, like, roughly draw it, uglyly draw it, uh, make it nicer later on. Don't forget the recording is available, the slides are available, and the OneNote is always available for you. I feel like co-dominance is easier than sex link at the moment. <laughs> because sex link has a lot to do with, like, female, male. There's, like, a lot of variables, right? Here you only have, like, one trait. No sexes to talk about, no no female male to talk about. Anyways, so this is uh, allele. Um, thing asks, do we write parental phenotypes F1 or just F1 phenotypes? Now that's up to you as long as you make it make it clear that it's F1. Now again, F1 is a very specific cross. F1 means that you're crossing two heterozygotes. So um, use it when it's relevant. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. So codominance is this, right? But now we're gonna do our little example because examples are needed. Oh wait, shucks. Never mind. So um moving on from codominance. Right, we're gonna do the codominant and multiple allele together example. I'm so sorry. All right, moving on. So codominance is that. Right. What if there is multiple alleles and codominance? What do you mean by multiple alleles? Literally, genes with more than two alleles. Not that in one person there are four different alleles or in one person there are like six different alleles. No, 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 no. One person still has two alleles, but types of alleles are many. So for example, this is the ABO gene for human blood groups. Um, this is how we represent the alleles. This is a specific term, a like specific um way of writing it so you must remember how to write this here so we have the big i big a allele and the big i big b allele which is co-dominant so they can be fully expressed at the same time now if they are if the person is heterozygous for these two alleles the person will have blood type a b right but type AB is not a special type, it just has both the antigens of blood type A and both the antigens of blood type B express at the same time. So it's co-dominant. However, the blood type O is determined by the O allele, which is recessive to A allele and B allele. So it's a, represented by a small I here. So these three are the same gene. It's just that there are multiple alleles for it. So I'm going to give you some time to like process this information and write down what you think the genotypes are in your little notebook or scribble it down somewhere in your head. So blood group here is phenotype. Yeah, this is genotype. So I expect you to be writing things like this. So 
if A is co-dominant to B, but is dominant than I, then the genotype could be like this, homozygous for the A allele, right? Or it could be heterozygous with the I of the O of this um, with this O allele because it's dominant compared to it. How about B? Same idea. How about AB? Co-dominant. And O should be like this. Can I miss anything? Because it's recessive. I don't feel like I missed out anything. Okay, so you can see here that A, the type AB is a co-dominant phenotype, just like Ron. Ron is red and white fur together. A, blood type AB is A and B expressed together at the same time. So with this, um, we can do a little genetic diagram right here. I would ask you to figure out your mom's and dad's genotype, but I don't know whether you have type, whether you know your blood type and know their blood type. So I'm just going to write a random example here. I'm just going to make it the toughest one because why not? So we're going to cross I like this to this and see what happens. So this is blood group AB to I better write blood group BG this. A, B to blood group B. It's the phenotype. So how are you going to cross this? How would the phenotypes look like? What would the genotypes be? They're all the same genes, just there's multiple alleles. Okay, again, I just reminded to label your diagram properly. Previously, we've done a lot of sex things once. This is the first multiple alleles together with co-dominance example. Make sure you label it so you know what you're drawing. Maybe writing black group in full would be good for you. Okay, so by now you should be um, intermediate level pro at drawing these diagrams. You've drawn so many. I've drawn so many this week. Okay, because I taught three classes, right? So that makes sense. The more you draw, the better you get at it, the faster you are. Sometimes you don't even need to draw it. You look at it and you're like, oh, I know what you're talking about. I'll stop talking. So you can describe your data in multiple ways here. You can see, um, uh, again, uh, this is not really uh, F1 cross, okay, because there's multiple alleles involved here. But we can talk about probability in general and say that, hey, probability of getting 
of blood group B is 50%. Number two, 50%. 25% of the rest. You can describe it any way you want, just for practice. So Ian asks, what, uh, what causes plus minus in blood types like A positive or O negative? Now that is called a rhesus, like a rhesus factor, and that is actually determined by a different gene. I will Google it for you because I don't know how to represent it. <clears throat> it's called a rhesus factor. And it's determined by looks of it um, a different gene, different gene type. Looks like autosomal, autosomal. Positive means dominant, negative means recessive. Hope that answers your question. With these kind of things, I don't remember. I don't remember because of the revise. <laughs> Will you learn about it? Um, no, but it can come out for exam. They can come out like any scenario for you and describe it for you, and you just have to do the cross yourself. But it's the same concepts, though. Same concept. Okay, so um, I assume you're all right with this. <clears throat> so, so far we have learned um, sex link. We have done codominance. We've done multiple alleles. So we're going to do one more for multiple alleles before we move on. Um, because different multiple allele examples, okay, would have sort of different different rules involved. So just now, two of them are codominant. One more recessive to both of them. How about this? This one had like a dominance relationship. So it's big C is more dominant than big small C, CH, which is more dominant than CH, which is more dominant than just C. And different variations of this will result in different appearance of rabbits. <laughs> so let's zoom in here and see what's going on. You can see full color is actually dominant. Now dash here means a wild card. It could be anything really. So it could dominant, homozygous dominant for that big C, or you know it could be anything behind because it's dominant than the other alleles. Chinchilla is quite dominant comparatively. It could be C, um, CH, CCH, so homozygous, or it could be CCH, C. It could be C. C H C H. You know what I'm saying? I hope you understand. Now, Himalayan, which is this particular phenotype, very cute. I think this is very cute. Um, <clears throat> it can be homozygous for that particular allele, and it could be maybe concealing a recessive allele here. Okay. Right, whereas albino only could be this recessive gene right here. This is a real example, by the way. This again is a specific term, real example, not just general. Okay. So the question is, the question is, because this is an example question, you need to show a genetic cross between big C, CH, and C, CHC. Oh my goodness. Let's do this. Big C, one again, small CH, zoom out a little bit and C, C, H, C. Okay, be careful with the big C, make sure you write it very big, not you get very confused. So parent phenotype, oh, you know what, I'm gonna let you figure this out. But the dominance relationship is on the left-hand side there. This is the question. How many genetic diagrams have you drawn so far? May I know? 
So two for sex lane. Three for sex lane. Is it? One just now. This is number five. The more diagrams you draw, the better you get at it. It's six marks. Six marks. Or more, if they ask you to explain. It's worth the trouble. Maybe one question for genetics is like 10 marks. I feel like it's probably it's quite like easy. Okay, again, remember to label properly. Make sure you say, oh, this one is the rabbit example. And it's like this, this, that, that. Okay, when confused, look at my one note. Try to sort sort it out. Make sure you write the dominance relationship in your paper. If not, you might walk away, forget about this, come back and be really, really confused, I imagine. Okay, I'm going to solve this while you solve it. And it's not chinchilla. Chinchilla is also an animal, but it also can be a color. Switch. You must be quite careful of the C, because big C and small C look very similar. So, yeah, just a warning there. No, I've done a mistake. So if you want to express this type of thing in a ratio, you got to write um, the phenotype to show. Okay, unless it's very strict, like it's very visible. So make sure you do write something like this to this to this equals to two to one to one. But you do need to tell them, you can't just write one to one. You do need to tell them what is going on here, especially if it's not a classical example. Usually they will ask that. Like, they will ask for a certain probability or certain ratio to what to what. Okay, so it looks like this. I hope you get the idea here. Um, the idea that one is just more dominant than other. Now there's just multiple one that, and it's a little series here, which is quite interesting. Um, they don't expect you to memorize this. Okay, just for the record. Again, um, when it comes to these A2 chapters, especially this semester, it's a lot of understanding that's going on. So it's not beneficial if you die, die, memorize this. It's beneficial if you understand how it works, you understand the example, um, you do more practice, and, and when you meet a new scenario, then you will know how to decipher the puzzle. It is a puzzle. So yeah. Um, any questions so far for multiple alleles? Because we are going to move on to the next one, which is, I think, more confusing than this one, this few examples. So let me count how many diagrams I've drawn so far. One, two, I know there's 
the two co-dominants one in the slides. This is three, four, five. So eight so far. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five in the slides. Seven, six. Seven. I don't think I can count. I think it should be seven Trinity diagrams so far. Yes? No? Let me know. All right, now we are doing different genetic diagram, different, different sort of, yay, seven so far. Oh, there's no animations. Hang on, I want it to be animated. If not, you will get scared. I don't know. A lot of words is overwhelming. Okay, so let's start with the next one. This is number category number four out of five. Okay, we are really doing this. I don't know if we can cover number five. Never mind, we'll just do it step by step. Just chill. It's okay. Don't worry if we cannot finish. No worries. Anyways, this is number four type of pattern of inheritance. This is gene interactions. This is the idea that, okay, when genes are different, different genes at different loci interact to affect one phenotype. In very simple words, this means that one gene can affect the other gene's phenotype. Okay, there's another word for this, it's called epistasis. You don't learn this word in your syllabus, but if you Google gene interactions, you won't get any results. If you Google epistasis, then more results will come out. Okay, so this is for you to Google if you want not, okay? But the idea is different genes, again, affect one phenotype, okay? When we did dihybrid, right? When we did dihybrid, we are doing two genes, two phenotype, right? Purple, white flower, so one flower color. Tall, short, that's height. So that's two traits, two genes. But here, two genes, two different genes, one phenotype. Okay, how is this possible? Let's give you an um, example here to grapple with. And of course, more genetic diagrams will be drawn here. Feather colors in chickens. Right, so individuals with dominant allele I, okay, different gene. That's why it's I and C. I have white feathers, even though dominant allele big C for colored feathers is present. So even if you have big C or small C, it doesn't matter. As long as you have dominant allele I, okay, heterozygous homozygous for the dominant allele I, it will be a white chicken, a white feathered chicken. Okay, only individuals that are homozygous recessive for I, right, the gene. Maybe I should draw a dot here and have at least one dominant allele for C, for color feathers, will be colored. Okay, so what the genotype is like. So if there is a big I, and it doesn't matter if it's homozygous or colored, the big I will sort of like cover the other phenotype, will interact, something happens in genetic type of, and like it overcomes that phenotype. And therefore, a chicken will be white, even though it's homozygous dominant for the colored feathers. Interesting. Right? So it's just one phenotype, you see? Two genes, two different alphabets here, four letters in total, but one phenotype. Okay, what's the next one? Right, if it's homozygous recessive for I, that means, uh, yeah, it's homozygous recessive for I, then only it could be a possibility of being colored, right? If those dominant colored alleles are present. And obviously, if it's homozygous recessive for both, then it'll be white because it's not colored. So it's re homozygous recessive colored, it's white, and the eye doesn't do anything anyway. Okay, what other phenotypes could, could we think, genotypes should we think, think of? What if it's, say, uh, big I, small I, small C, small C? Well, this one's not colored anyway, and this is definitely going to be white. Okay, let's do another what if. What if it looks like this? Um, big I, small I, big C, small C. So heterozygous for both genes. It's going to be white. As long as this big I is present, it is going to be white. Interesting. Right. So we are going to cross some chickens here. Yay. 
So we're going to cross a white chicken with a white chicken, but this, both these white chickens are purebred and uh, homozygous at both genes. So this is really your parental genotype. This is like the Mendelian cross thing. I forgot to draw the cross again. Okay. So the meats, like this, right? Okay, this should be your eight genetic diagram. And if you put it together in Punnett Square, you get heterozygous at both genes. And this feather, because it has the white dominant allele, sorry, the eye, dominant allele eye, big eye means white law, all chickens are white. Okay, what if you cross F1 with F1? This is genetic diagram number nine. Okay, wait, let me pause two seconds. Maybe 10. Right, moving on. Purebred. Classical. Example. Right, it's number nine. Genetic diagram number nine. So, heterozygous cross with heterozygous. This is F1 cross with F1. Both heterozygous at both genes. So the gametes, okay, you can expect it to be few, 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 crazy and few, 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 very crazy too, right? Remember um, the triangle thing? Uh, it doesn't work here because it's not nitrogen one. It's not dihybrid technically, but you can, if you arrange it in the right order, okay, it will still help you organize your thoughts. Let me, I don't know whether this is in the slides, in, in the OneNote, let me look. Nope, not in the OneNote. Right, I'm just going to draw it on slides here. No, I'm not even going to draw it on the slides. I'm just going to show you the thing. You should get something like this in the end. Right, I'm going to pause here so you can actually draw it and figure this out, um, you realize that it will be a ratio of 13 to 1. This is an F2, the result of the F2. I'm going to give you some time and I'm going to explain it and break it down. So I'll give you a bit longer this time, around five minutes, because I feel like the previous one also like a bit messy, right? So five minutes, we'll come back at 2.43. Just for you to settle things down, settle things. Uh, you should have nine genetic diagrams by the end of this, nine. And you know what? I realized there's 11 today, actually, total not 10. But never mind, let's draw this first. Draw this first. Okay. Do it row by row and then column by column by column, then row by row and make your life easier. Remember the technique we learned like yesterday? I'm going to go toilet.
Okay, the next three more minutes for you to finish drawing. Yes, the ratio is meant to be 13 to 3. You are right. Wait. Ah, 13 to 3. Typo. Goodbye. My brain lagged and didn't see it properly. How do I change that? You know what? Hard. And then. Thank you. Man, I have to update my sites again to make sure the X's are there and whatnot. And I'll upload a new one again. Right, one more minute to complete your nine genetic diagram of the day. It's helpful, right? The genetic diagram drawing. This is why I made live. I want to make sure you actually draw. If not, I could be pre-recording and I'll be like, pause this video and draw. And you'll be like, yeah, whatever, skip. Anyways, one more minute left to send. Okay, it's 243. So, look, this is gene interaction. Again, if there is big I, it's going to cover the phenotype of the color. So it doesn't matter what is happening with the C, as long as the big I, as long as the big I that is there, it is all going to be white. All going to be white. Right, the only exception to this case is if both of them are homozygous recessive. they will be white. There are only three possibilities that it could be colored when there is no big I present, so homozygous recessive for the I gene here, and there is a dominant C around, big C that's around, colored. So you can see here that the ratio is 13 to 3, Okay, and how did 13 come about? All right, 13 is actually 9 plus 3 plus 1. You know the 9 to 3 1 ratio? Okay, now it's no longer 9 to 3 1. There are no four phenotypes, there's only two. Why? Because gene interaction law. So 13 to 3. So probability that it's white would be um, 13 out of 16, whereas colored would be 3 out of 16. Your friend asks, how would we know which allele is more significant than the other? Well, the question will tell you in words, like it did just now. So it just depends on sort of the question. So right now, we're going to do another question. Yay, more gen diagrams, gen diagram number 10. Here we go. Okay, would be this. This is an uh, example from a textbook. I think it's really, really good. Um, I made it in point form so that you can read it easier. So I'm going to um, sort of run it through, run it, run through it for you so that you sort of know what's going on. <clears throat> so this is saying that there is a purebred pink flower variety. What does it probably mean? Probably means homozygous. La. Homozygous pink plus with homozygous white had purple flowers. Whoa. Purple flower. Okay, anyways. 
interbreeding this offspring to give another generation. So this is F1, purebred, cross with purebred, is P cross with P, um, interbreeding the offspring, which means it's the heterozygous for both genes, gives a, a ratio of purple, pink, white, and a ratio of nine, three, four. Interesting, right? Four here is obviously three plus one. Nine, three, three, one modified ratio here. Now this ratio is the F2 ratio. Now they say that there are two loci, A and B, Two loci means two positions of genes, means two genes, right, on different chromosomes are involved here, making sure you know it's different chromosome. So far, all different chromosomes, one, okay? And this is the genotype that's going on. If you have big A and big B, it will make purple together. If you have big A but homozygous recessive for B, it's going to be pink, and it's going to be white if, doesn't matter, the back is going to be white if the front is homozygous recessive. So it's asking you to show this 934 ratio in a second generation. Now, you guys are pros at the monohybrid and dihybrid thing already. Don't draw the purebred one. Don't draw this already. Just draw the sec how to result in a second generation, aka the F2 generation. Second generation is referring to F2 here. Okay, how do you result in this? Cross, again, two heterozygous individuals for both genes. So F1, right? I'm not going to give you much guidance on this. I'm not going to draw the first few for you. Figure it out. Stare this question a bit longer. Um, I'll give you another five minutes now in order to figure it out. I don't know why I erased that. Let me put it back. Uh, okay, so start from F1 now. Uh, cross F1 with F1. Straight. We need to cross the parental. So you need to... So you can draw one less genetic diagram. This is genetic diagram number 10. Label, right la, gene interaction on the top. Salvia, flower, example. Because each different case has different rules. You know? Okay, I'll shut up now. Five minutes. We'll resume at 2.53. Then we'll stop here, okay? This last, last, last. We'll do the next one, next class.
Two more minutes left, guys. I'm going to start doodling. Prepare. Prepare follow. Hey, I'm a purple pen. F1. Commit. Oh no, I have to draw a big diagram. Okay, fine, fine. I should have started earlier. Cheating, cause got one note. Okay guys, it's 2.54, so um, I'm working on my own Punnett square here. Of course, I cheated a little bit and used the table because, well, it, it's it's a 5x5 five five table, or 4x4, four four. And, 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 and mine's really messy all the time, so I think this will save your eyes a little bit. Anyways, um, with this particular phenotypes, I guess we do need to refer to the table and realize what's going on. Um, okay, commit this to some sort of memory. I feel like I sort of know what's going on already. As long as big A and big B, we can expect it to be purple, purple, purple. Um, I suppose you can use the triangle rule to some extent here um, because there is a little trend, you know, 9331. They give nine three four, right? So we can we can predict that nine is the same. So I'm just gonna label the. I'm also cross checking like if there's a big A and big B, it should be purple. And it's around this triangle area. Um, I'm gonna erase that. Okay, and if it's big A and tiny B, both tiny B. Then it will be pink according to. Let me use a different color. I uh, should have used pink for this. Thing. I'm gonna use orange. Pink for um, if there is a big A and homozygous recessive for the B according to the table. 
And last but not least, okay, the table tells us that if it's small A's in front, then it's going to be white. It's going to be white flower. So this four is white. So the ratio here of purple to pink to white, oops, is nine to three to four. You realize that in the previous example as well as this example, um, it sort of has that triangle thing, but not quite. So you do really have to read the question properly and understand it properly in order to get the right ratio. I find genetics very fun. This chapter is very, very fun for me. Now, if you don't find it fun and you're confused, again, let me know and I will personally walk you through it. Okay, 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 okay. And um, with three minutes remaining, okay, I'm going to stop here. Right, the next one is a little bit insane too. Okay. Um, and we're continuing this on Monday. So next week, what I'm planning to do is this, right? Next week on Monday, we have class. We will finish up and then we will discuss the chi-square test that I've given to you yesterday. Okay, so remember to finish the chi-square test practice. And if you're asking, do I have to do the entire paper? Yes, you need to do the entire paper. It's practice, okay? How, when else are you going to do paper five practice? It's very hard to do on your own. You need someone to walk you through it, I think. And you are probably busy doing topical for paper four already. So paper five, we do in class, okay? Um, and also there will be, so we will do that on Monday. On Tuesday, we will do breakout rooms and a worksheet together and we will discuss the answers. On Friday, there'll be a pre-recorded video. So next week is really just finishing up the chapter and um, discussion of what we have done so far. Again, this requires practice, so be ready to draw more than the diagrams. <laughs> okay, uh, with that, I'm done. Any questions? No, no. All right, then. See you guys.